And then I realized everything my parents thought they knew about it was wrong. And it was influenced by the media back then. I mean, it looks like a shark. That's cool. And the Porsche snobs won't like it, which is even better because then you won't become one of them. Oh, look at the car I have. Oh, look, I'm in a club. It should be worth more. What's up, people? Time to go car shopping, Casey style. So what that basically means is I'm a cheapo, but a through and through car guy, which means I don't like paying money for stupid things, and I'm basically broke. So, which is pretty much like most people out there. So how do I apply my knowledge and trickery, there's no trickery, um, to get the sweetest car for the least amount of money? And also, how do you devalue a car, someone asked me. Like, what makes cars worth less than they should be? So, fascinating thing. And this is all gonna come in together, so let's just talk about where you get the greatest deals in the car world. First of all, if you start using all of the major buzzword names, you're probably not gonna get a very good deal. But in every car mark, there are models of cars that are either completely forgotten by all the glamorous collectors and people that like to go to the clubs. Oh, look at the car I have. Oh, look, I'm in a club. It should be worth more. Oh, you know, those people that aren't real car people, but annoyingly ruin the prices by upping them for everybody. Um, and there's also the cars that are black sheep, where it's like, oh, well, we belong to this club, and we've all decided that car is ugly. Therefore, it is not worth any money. Which is also stupid and not real car people, and I don't like that. Um, which is also crazy because I've been around long enough, I've seen cars go from just like everybody hated them to now they're cool and chic. So, basically the moral of the story is, if you're a real car guy and you like a car, and it's an okay car, look past all the BS from everybody else, and you might find a really great car that you're gonna love and have a lot of pride in and enjoy and drive uh, that's gonna be spectacular, even if the mass populace is too stupid to know it's any good. Let's talk about what makes a car not valuable, okay? First of all, cars that are interesting and attractive to people, collector cars, etc., they have a certain utility, okay? In the sense of like, how drivable are they? Are they reasonably comfortable to drive? Are they fast? Do they stop well? Do they handle well? Do they cost a fortune to repair? Are they relatively easy to repair? That comes into it. But the utility isn't the greatest factor because there are a lot of cars out there that are just cantankerous, delicate, overly complex disasters, which are worth too much money, i.e. like my old Countach if I still had it. It was a cantankerous, delicate, pain in the butt that wasn't that fast, but I loved it anyway. And then the prices went through the moon. That's, that's a topic for another time. But I'm gonna tell you the truth on what makes cars valuable and what makes certain cars not valuable. And the world's not gonna like to hear it because there's some nasty subjects there. What makes interesting sports cars valuable has to do everything to do with money and class. It has everything to do with fantasy. And it has everything to do with how much does it make your loins burn. Let's, let's be honest, okay? If it's fast and exciting and visceral and colorful and mean, then it's making your loins burn, okay? And it's exciting to drive. Like an F40 is a badass visceral machine, okay? Uh, my Dodge Viper, badass visceral machine. But... And F40 is worth a heck of a lot more, and a Viper is not worth that much money. So why? You know, production numbers come into play with some things, but the truth of the matter is, rarity doesn't have that much to do with the value of a car. You know, I think they made, what, 30 Ferrari 250 GTOs? Oh, big deal. I've owned race cars and things where there were less of them than that. It's not about rarity so much. The other thing that drives me nuts, I just have to throw out there, is all the muscle car guys are like, well, if you add up, all the different combinations of this here car, the engine spec, the, the funny houndstooth uh, upholstery on the interior, this color, that color, and this year, they only made seven like this. I'm like, big deal, dude. They made 30,000 of that car that year. Like, that's not rare. I can just get another one and dude it up like that to match it. So that's not real rare. But when people get an interesting car, they want a fantasy. And if the fantasy is worth it that much to them, they're going to spend money to get it. And a lot of those fantasies relate to, do I think I'm rich? Do I think I'm some sort of cool actor like Steve McQueen or James Dean or something like that, right? Uh, like, you know, the bullet Mustang? It's not that special of a car. You can build a zillion of those for less, but oh, because it's Steve McQueen and Steve McQueen beat the crap out of it. It's worth a ton of money. Stupid. I mean, for that one person, whatever, but come on. Let's write our own history for these cars, right? 
be an individual. The other one is if it's like, oh, it's so chic. Everybody had this was rich and had many servants and peasants. And I want to imagine I'm like that too. That makes the cars worth a bunch of money, which is silly. So conversely, what makes cars not worth a bunch of money? Well, and don't hate me for saying this, but it's true. Racial things come into play. If the people with money that decides cars worth a bunch of money and those clubs and such decide that a car is, is liked by a demographic of people that they thumb the nose down at, then they're not going to like it. Uh, if a car seems kind of like, you know, Southern or Redneck, or in their opinion, it's not going to be worth as much, which I think is what frankly hurts Corvette C4s, which is stupid because that is the ultimate best deal in the sports car world, period. Corvette C4s. But you have to get over yourself. Because people look at it and go, well, it's just gray-haired old balding men in a boring club, or it's rednecks. And, you know, both of those uh, have a certain amount of truth to them, but are just mean and derogatory, and we need to get over it, because those are great cars. Okay? Oh, I don't like them, because the interiors are kind of plastic. So what? So what? It's a cool car. So, you know, and then, of course, there's cars like, there's certain Maseratis and things that you know, cost a fair amount to fix or can be a little cantankerous. And people like to knock them because they weren't famous, they don't fit some fantasy for them, and they just beat up on them because you're actually buying like an Italian exotic car and it takes maintenance. So then they just decide it's not worth anything. And that is just absolutely so silly. As an example, I really like uh, 1980s Porsches. I love 944s. I even kind of like 924s. 928s are kind of neat. But the Porsche world is the ultimate world of just, like, snobs. Oh, my God. And it's not even, like, like good snobs. It's just snobs. It's like, we like our cars to be air-cooled and sound like sewing machines, even though it's been the same body style since the 60s. Like, great. They made a ton of those things. Let's make those worth a ton of money. We don't like it if it has water. We don't like the engine in the front. That's redneck like some sort of American muscle car. It was originally a Volkswagen. It was, the 924 was to be a Volkswagen and that's a peasant car. Uh, do you see the snobbery that comes out to make cars worth a lot of money? So another car that's just the best value is a 944. Such a cool car. I love them. They're perfectly balanced. They're pointing. They look good. They were in cool 80s pop culture. They're just fun little cars. They're not that fast. But as an example, the 944 Turbo was faster around a road course than the 911 Turbo or 930 Turbo, I think, back in the day. So, snob on it. But Porsche people are like, <laughs> we have to have air-cooled engines with the engine in a weird place, like some sort of weird pre-war Tatra or like Ferdinand's Porsche's original people for the ca car for the people. Uh, big deal. And then, uh, you know, I just, I hate snobbery on cars. I'm just a car guy. And the thing about it is that's neat, and I, I've been car shopping, and actually I bought a car today, so this is not gonna be in, um, in order, but that's okay. We're gonna shop anyway, and then I'll show you what I bought. But I had a huge moment where I realized I feel amazing about my purchase. I love the car. I think it's so great. And I feel just as good about this car as I would if I bought like a $100,000 something or other. I've lost it after forever. But the thing cost peanuts. It was peanuts. But I think it's great. It takes me back to a cool time. It's a great built car, has a neat design. It's got history. I can't wait to drive it. I can't wait to show you guys. Can't wait to work on it and fix it up and make it better, which I think we all enjoy. You know, fixing up a car is a great thing. It's kind of like, it's cathartic, right? You feel better about yourself to, to bring something back and, and give it new life, especially if in some way you connect to that car. And maybe spoiler alert for mine, it's from the 80s. It, uh, it's just a funny thing. So there's so many great cars out there you can really just appreciate as a car guy. And I love that nowadays on the internet, there's cool things like Radwood, where people are embracing the wackiness of old that people used to hate 80s stuff forever. As a perfect example, I should do a video on this if you guys like, the DeLorean is the most misunderstood automobile. And I say automobile because forget about the company and the guy. Just forget about it right now. The DeLorean car is the most misunderstood car of the 20th century, period. And it was the most amazing case study for me as a kid because my baby boomer parents and all baby boomers, and I'm not knocking them, I'm just using that generation, all were like slanted by the media to despise that car and think it's a junk lemon, 
when in fact that's not true remotely whatsoever. I got a buddy that's got like 250,000 miles on one. I have daily driven two DeLoreans through all four seasons in Ohio snow, everything. I love the car, I would daily drive one any day of the year. Great car, but the baby boomers ruined it and they all think it's junk. And the people are like, oh, it's a junk car. You ask them, you ever driven one? No. And it's all missed. So back then was a great learning lesson for me when I wanted to learn about the car and find out if they were any good because I thought I wanted to own one as a kid. And then I realized everything my parents thought they knew about it was wrong. And it was influenced by the media back then. So that's a perfect example of how stupid things can ruin the value of a car for so long. But for us car guys, it's a perfect opportunity for us to have great fun. So let's look for some cars. So I got my computer out, obviously, like people do late in the evening. And as you can see, I am on Facebook. Because right now, I think Facebook Marketplace is probably the best place to get good deals. Okay, Casey, you old geezer, work the internet. Let's go. Marketplace. All right, so I'm going to start with what I know. Um, now, typically, if I'm going to go back in the day and I'm going to try to find a car I can afford, I'm thinking Porsche 944. They make great all year round cars. They're really hard to rust. Porsche galvanized the bodies, I think. And they got great weight distribution. And I like them. Porsche uh, Corvette C4s are great cars, but I don't know. I don't think they're that great in the winter. I had one in the winter. They're eh. And um, maybe like a 928 or something. But you know what? I also came to myself, you know, I should look at some Japanese cars from the 80s too, because I haven't had one of those. And they're kind of cool, right? The first gen MR2s, those old Supers from the 80s. I drove one of those back in the day. That was cool. All right, so as you can see, I was out here looking for stuff. I got some C4 Corvettes popping up. And um, I'm just gonna start right here with yeah, C4 Corvette. Ah, screw it, I'll just go to Corvette. You can't really type in C4 Corvette because people don't really search them by body styles. But as an example here, so C4s, they're pretty much all the same. I mean, by the time it got to the 90s, they changed the dash up so it had like analog gauges instead of the Death Star dash that was all like that multicolored LCD. Um, the better engine made more power. Um, it also had the six-speed manual if you can get it. And I, I don't like automatic sports cars. There's some smoking deals on automatic sports cars from back in the day, but I don't really like them. It's kind of hard to find a Corvette in manual because the people that bought them were old and tired and remembered drag racing in the 60s and thought automatic is cool. It's not. Blech. So anyway, it's harder to find a Corvette that's manual. And the ones you want to get are going to be the six-speed. I think that was somewhere in the area of, I can't remember if it was like 89, 90, or 91. Probably like 1990-ish was the first six-speed Corvette. That's, I had one of those. They were great. Um, the 80s Corvettes had the 4 Plus 3, which is a four-speed transmission with overdrive that you could actuate in the top three gears. So it's kind of weird. I guess it's okay. I'm not too wild about that. Um, also, a Corvette C4 is the best car to cut apart to make a custom out of it. Uh, you hate me if you want Corvette, people. It's true. They're a great smoking deal, and you can make awesome customs out of it. So let's just look see what we got here. Okay, 85 Corvette Coupe, two-door. I'm just going to open this up. Maybe, if it works. They're asking 3500 bucks. It's got torque thrust wheels on it. It looks kind of cool. Not really the right period. It's red. It's got a Targa roof. Uh, 91,000 miles. Paint's a little faded. Uh, but, you know, probably a half-decent car. Good starter for restoration. Uses everyday driver. Must see for yourself. Yeah, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's got the clear roof. And paint's a little faded. You could probably buff that out. Maybe wet sand it. Um, or, you yeah, know, screw it. Plastic dip it or something. I don't know. Or paint it. Learn how to paint. It's, they're asking 3500 bucks. You could probably get it for three grand. It's a red Corvette. I mean, come on. I had a Corvette C4. It had like 110,000 miles. It was a fine car. You can go down to AutoZone or whatever and get parts for it. Gosh, it's just such, it's exciting to see this. And frankly, I hope the prices of these things stay down. And I'm going to beat up all the cars I like right now. Yeah, all you bunch of snobs out there, this here's a C4 Corvette. It's only for rednecks. You got to drive a car hard in this. Or what you need to do is you need to, to join my really old gray-haired club where we drive five miles an hour at all times. Okay, car guys, you hate me? I just saved you forever so these car prices don't go way up and you can actually enjoy them. You're welcome. All right, what else here? Look, 4,500 bucks, four grand. I mean, come on, there, there's bunches of them. They're all over the place. Pick your poison. It's, it's just, it's great fun. You can go check them out. It's, it's a Chevy small block. I mean, people give those things away practically. <laughs> I just, uh, I think that's a great place. C5 Corvettes are a good value too, but I really want to talk about things that are 
very affordable, like less than five grand. So that's a place to start. Uh, C4 Corvette's not really that great in winter. Um, the tires aren't that wide, uh, and you can get all season tires for them, which are eh. But keep in mind, it's a harder sprung car, not a lot of weight transfer. It is rear wheel drive, so you need to be good at, at you know, being able to drift and hold controlled slides and things like that. But it can be done. I've done it. You know, back in the day, it wasn't great. I lived in a small town. It's not ideal to be in a C4 Corvette if you hit the highway in snow. But depending on where you live and what you choose to do, uh, depending on how you work and what you need to rely on it for, it's a very doable thing. And even if it's your secondary car and you work hard, maybe flip the things, I don't know, restore some bicycles and sell them, you too could afford a C4 Corvette. So next on the list, Porsche 944. I love them. I've always loved them since I was a kid. Uh, Porsche 944 has evolved from, if I'm not mistaken, the Porsche 924, which originally was a car that was going to be made for Volkswagen and or Audi in the 1970s. And then Volkswagen pulled the plug. They're like, we don't need a... <laughs> they didn't need a sports car. Um, and they were powered by the Audi engine and they Porsche badge and that's what it was. So the 944 grew out of the 924. It got the fender flares, which I just think look amazing. It reminds me of all the uh, cars from the uh, 80s racing like Daytona and whatnot. Um, so they look tough. They look good. They were in a bunch of uh, cool stuff, TVs and movies in the 80s. But it got an engine developed by Porsche. It's four-cylinder. It's slanted. And it's got uh, two balance shafts in it. So it's a little smooth. That's why it has two timing belts. One for the camshaft, one for the balance shafts. And um, if I'm not mistaken, the Porsche 944 engine is basically derived off of half of the architecture from a 928. Where it's pretty similar. And uh, they do have electronic fuel injection versus Bosch K-Jetronic, which is nice. Makes more power. Uh, and I just like them a lot. People used to freak out, oh, water pumps and timing belts. Ooh, it's not that bad. I mean, I can do that in my driveway, even without the tensioning tool. If you're a mechanic that's worth your salt and you can actually feel the timing belts, like on this Ducati or something, you can do it. In fact, you, you need like a couple thin wrenches, I think, for the timing belt. But frankly, one of them I used was thick sheet metal and I cut it with some shears and made my own wrench. Like, it's not that hard. It's, it's just not that hard. But if you've never done it before, you'd probably want somebody with a little bit of um, expertise there. So I love these cars. They're not super fast. It's not a car to beat on. It's not a burnout car. In fact, 944s, if they have the original clutch, when you test drive it, find out if it has a lot of drive line lash. lash. When you accelerate and then slow down, does it like lag and then buck? Does it do that? That's a sign that the clutch is blown out because instead of having springs, like a normal clutch in the middle, it's, it's rubber. So if you do like I did and be a nice guy and teach your ex dumb girlfriend to drive stick shift in it, she'll ruin the clutch. It'll still drive fine, but she'll blow out the center. Or anybody learning to drive stick, no, I'm not being sexist. It just happens I was being nice to that girlfriend at the time and she trashed my Porsche clutch. So anyway, so don't do that. It's not, a, uh, it's not a drag racing car. You can do that with the Corvette if, you, if that's your thing. But a 944, perfect car for the street, perfect car for light track days. You can autocross, you can have a great time, and there's loads of parts available. There's lots of cars that are junk, so if you need an engine, you need something off it, you can get parts cars. So the trouble with 944s are the prices are kind of all over the board. And it's getting harder to find a nice one because a lot of them got trashed by people that could afford it and thought they were cool because they had a Porsche. And they're like, oh, I fancy I have a Porsche. I'm going to ruin this little car and drive it to the bar like an idiot and sideswipe somebody. Oh, God. Um, but there's still good cars out there. Don't be afraid of mileage as much on a 944 depending on the owner. I've seen 944 as well into the 100,000 miles that are nice. But you got to know. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the cylinders are aluminum with like a Nicosil coating or something. So if it's smoking, you might want to avoid it because just you're not going to rebuild that engine like a small block Chevy. You want to kind of find one that's about as nice as you reasonably can, that runs good. You can do little things. You can make the body better. But there's some things that just you don't fix up so easily. And since it's a car not worth a ton of money, you, don't, you want to get a car that is a good value. So the time and effort and money you put into it, you have a better chance of getting back or retaining the value rather than buying a basket case for a couple of grand that is going to take forever to make better and it's never going to be as good a car as the other one. So something to think about. Um, also, I, I kind of find it annoying the people that just trash them or rally them or think they're cool because I got a cheap Porsche and I'm going to beat the crap out of it. Well, you're an ass and not a car guy and a jerk. So don't do that. It's a perfectly nice car. Sell it to somebody who might care like a young person out there. Okay, so let's look at one here. Here's an 86 944. It is that kind of champagne color, which a lot of people didn't like, but has grown on me. Ooh, that's got kind of a nice interior. 
Now, here's a perfect example. $3,200, 91,000 miles, beautiful seats, everything about it's nice except for one thing, it's automatic, which ruins it for me. But if you don't mind driving an automatic 944, you can get smoking deals on cars that usually are very nice because they were automatic and not driven hard. All right. Now, the trouble with 944s are now, these Porsche geeks are in horrible dealerships, both small and large, are trying to inflate the prices of them. Because they're like, we need another Porsche to inflate the prices of, like all these other Porsches. Let's ruin the 944 for everybody. So that's what they're trying to do. Um, you can still buy nine, nice 944s for four to six or seven grand all the time, but it's harder and you gotta look. If you go on eBay, all the prices there are inflated. People want like $8,000, 10, 12, $15,000. And it's just like, get over yourself. And you also see a listing of a number of dealerships. And you know, it's like, get a new job. All you're doing is inflating all the prices of cars and ruining it for car guys everywhere. I hate that. Um, let's see what else we got here. I did see a while back ago, there was a 944 Turbo on here. Now, turbo prices have gone up quite a bit. Yeah, here it is. They're asking seven grand for this one. 71,000 miles is burgundy. It's got kind of the twist looking wheels going on. Now, it's got an issue. It says car turns, but does not turn on. I have audio is starting issue. Cannot upload it here. Clean car, clean title. For seven grand with that kind of mileage for a 944 Turbo with this uh, miles in its stick shift, um, pretty decent seats, pretty decent interior. Gosh, like even if it broke a timing belt and you had to take the head off and have the head rebuilt and the valves done, if it didn't like bust the valves off, you could, you could spend a little effort to work on this and come out ahead. Uh, for me right now, that's out of my budget, but for maybe one of you, this is going to be a great car. You're welcome. So you've got to be more careful. Here's a car. This is an example of one I think that's probably been maintained well. They're asking 7,500 bucks for it. A little high-ish. Um, the reason I say that, it's got 143,000 miles. But this person, the way they write about it, you can tell they really care. They, they gave you a basic brief description about this car. They told you all the great things that are on here. Um, you know, of things they've done to make it better. They've powder-coated the uh, phone dials white. I think that's a really great, handsome combination. I think it just looks well. They photographed it nicely. The paint, they've taken a lot of pride. It's got nice sports seats. They look great. It's got a roll bar in it. It's got the old dashboard. Ooh, that's all, that, mm, they are talking my language. I like the old dashboard. Uh, the old dashboard pre-85 has the uh, round gauges. That's kind of my thing. Now that's interesting. Those look like the gauges out of a 924 because they have red needles instead of yellow like in a 944. That's weird. Anyway, they're asking a bit of money for it, but it looks like they really took care of it. So if you t call this person, they probably know everything about it. If the body's beautiful, the interior's beautiful, it's got nice, tasteful add-ons, um, you know, and it doesn't smoke or make any, any hateful noises, the suspension's tight, and it drives great, it's probably a perfectly good car. So you gotta decide what do you want and what kind of love do you want. They made a lot of 944, so in this example, I might be willing to spend more money on a car with more miles, because it looks beautiful and it probably has a great owner. The other reason I like simple cars like this they're less prone to braking. Once you get it worked out and you maintain them nicely, they don't have all this crap that glitches. Like the Porsche bodies don't rust. You can maintain them. And the other thing nice about getting an older sports car like this, you always have like a cult community and a cult following, which means basically every problem the car has ever had or will ever had has already happened. Somebody's talked about it on the internet and has a fix, which means the, the, the world is your treasure trove. So if you can't work on a car, just have a good service shop you trust. It's all about a calculated risk. And I can tell you from my entire lifetime experience, I have always ended up so much better off by driving a cool cult car like this that's in good condition, maintaining it myself, just looking after it, caring about the car, that's important, rather than just losing money hand over fist on some boring, stupid new car that's gonna break, where you get stuck dealing with dealerships that hate you and everybody and themselves. Okay, moving right along. Let's look at Porsche 928s. They are a funny car. Uh, it, they're bigger, they're heavier than a 944, but they're grand touring kind of car. It's not a car you're gonna throw around necessarily. You could. Uh, and they're V8, that's kind of neat. But the prices are all over the board. Uh, the later ones that are making more power, Porsche people have decided, the snobs have decided to make them worth more money, so thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 for crap like that. But the early ones, maybe the single camshaft rather than the four camshaft ones, they're simpler, the five speeds, if you can find them, a lot of them are automatic, which is kind of a drag, uh, are cheaper. Let's look at one here. Here's one in Michigan, 
127,000 miles. That's a bit much, so we'll see what it is. It's got the little wing. It's black. Uh, they're asking 4,500 bucks for it. Eh, doesn't look that shiny. Maybe they just cleaned it off bad. And I also judge by the, you know, how nice is the car going to be when the garage is a total mess, right? You just, you look at those things. I'm not picking on the person, but I am utilizing it to think. So 4,500 bucks, it could be an okay car. It's got a lot of miles. Okay, what else we got here? Let's look at this one. 6,750, 6,750. Now, allegedly this car has 32,000 miles, which is really low. But this guy's saying new tires and brakes, belts and hoses, plugs and wires, water pump, timing belt, fuel pump, intake boots, fuel accumulator, slave cylinder, runs great. Interior needs some work. All right, let's look at these pictures here. It's cool. It's good color. Looks very shiny. Um, it doesn't say repaint. That, that might lead me to believe it could be a low mileage car like that. And judging from the fact that it's got all this work done to it, might be a car that got pulled out of a garage from long-term storage. So something like this would come down to how well it was caretake um, and look, looked after. Is it smoking? Does it have any big issues? Has it been hit? Is it rotted out? The seats are going bad here. The cloth just does over time and the dash cracks. Uh, you, can, you can have that upholstered relatively easily, but that's going to be a cost to do it right. That's, that seat's covered up. So we'll see on that one. That that could be a could be a winner. It's a little more money. You don't know how much you can bring them down in price, and that's assuming he doesn't have any other big horrible issues. Here's another 928, 85, 164,000 miles in automatic. You know that at least tells you these cars can drive for a long, long, long time. Um, it says runs great, 32 valve, 35 year old, not perfect, uh, and that's it. It looks beautiful. It's all polished. Wheels are polished. That's cool. I mean. Isn't that neat they can have a car that's that chic and interesting looking that you can put that many miles on? I mean, it looks like a shark. That's cool. And the Porsche snobs won't like it, which is even better because then you won't become one of them. <laughs> okay, if you're in the Porsche club, I like you well enough too. It's just not my scene. I would rather be driving and it's fun to make fun of you guys. So hate me. You're making fun of me? Be my guest. I'm on the internet. So those are some good deals there. Let me try out some Japanese cars. Let's see if there's any MR Mr. Twos. I like the first generations. Second generations are neat. I rode around with a buddy, but I just, there's something I like about the funky folded paper origami look of the first ones. I don't care if they're slower and more cantankerous. They're, I, I think they're just fine. They're great cars. Harder to find a nice one. They can rot. Gosh, not much came up. What does this guy want? Fostoria, woo. Both tops or best offer, 4,200 bucks. Looks like it sat around a lot, 100,000 miles. It could be okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess they really took care of that car as a table. Uh, I'd be into that. I don't know if I want to drive it in the winter in Ohio because I feel like it would rot to the ground with salt. Uh, German cars do pretty well uh, in the salt in the, win in the winter. So that's why I'm kind of partial to that. Let's type in super for fun. Now, I know you guys will lose your mind if I don't type in BMW. So I'll do that too. All right. These, uh, is this 91? This generation of Supers kind of neat. I drove one way back when. I test drove it. My dad was snobbing on Japanese cars. He influenced me too much with cars back when. Now this is interesting too. So a decent Scirocco, they're starting to want money too. Here's an 88. I used to have one of these. Mine was black. 16 valve. That's a cool car. That one's really nice. That one's pretty darn nice. They want eight grand for it, which is, you know, a bit of money. But if you got a nice Scirocco, the seats are probably garbage. And these pedals are stupid. Those are those really cheap pedal covers that people put on because they want to feel like a race car driver, even though it makes the pedals crap and they come loose and then your feet get caught on them. Yeah, I don't think that's an $8,000 car. Sorry, dude. Hey, check this out, you guys. It's a Harley Quinn Jetta from the 90s. It's actually supposed to be like that from the factory. I don't know if that's actually the factory car. I think Donut Media or somebody recently did something on the Harley Quinn. But uh, yeah, 5,500 bucks. If you want to always be remembered, that's the car for you. I saw this earlier and I thought maybe I should do this. And I don't know if I could bring myself to drive that every day. I mean, I really like it. But the problem, this is America in the Midwest. People are gonna look at that. What in the hell? What in the hell kind of freak show clown car is that? How many clowns can you fit in your car? How many dumb jokes can I tell you in five minutes? That's what would happen. Look at those sweet seats. This car is awesome. It's got like the tartan seats. Yes. All right, let's look up BMWs, used guys. Oh, and then Beamer people got all snobby and made the BMW M3s from the 80s worth a ton of money. Get life. They're not that great. You guys just need to relax. 
Who, what's this? A 1998 M3 for how much? 3,200 bucks. What? 173,000 miles, got a lot of miles. Headlights are all faded or foggy looking. Interior looks okay. You could probably clean it up. Uh, brake pad light, mm, chick engine light, airbag light. Pfft. Yeah, you know, it's 3,200 bucks. You know, someday these goobers are gonna like lose their mind. Like, I need a 90s M3, let's make it worth too much money. I don't know, maybe not, I hope they don't. I just like real people to be able to afford stuff. Cause we're not making more money. Why are all these cars all worth too much money? Cause people are getting loans. That's the problem. One of the problems, there's lots of problems. I'm an old man and I'm gonna say old man things and rant. Uh, things cost more. Back in my day, I used to buy things cheaper. <laughs> Well, whatever. I still think I can drive old cars year round because we did back in my day. All right. Well, start looking, guys. Tell me what deals you find. This is what I've seen so far, but I am going to get an old car back from my day. I'm going to drive it. I'm going to fix it up. It's going to be great on YouTube. Yes. Lamborghini builds. Lame. Who could afford that? I'm going to do a real build with you guys. We'll do it together. We'll go for a cruise. All right, so maybe help me out, see if you guys find any deals, or you know, get them for yourself. I've, I've had my time, right? And uh, if you guys get inspired to find any great cars and have a good experience, I hope you share it. And uh, we get to, I don't know, go for a cruise sometime in the future or something. But I'm gonna buy a car, I don't know what it'll be. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just go nuts, I don't even know. But in the meantime, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.